Alright guys, Navy style. Safety, it's off, but you, whatever. Safety, chamber, magazine, safety, here we go, that's Navy style, boot camp. <laughs> Hey guys, Crackshot47 here. As I said in my previous video, I'm back. And I got something kind of special here for you. You'll remember when I was in China, I did that video on the Nanjing Massacre, uh, kind of centering on World War II, and it's a little bit of a departure from my uh, Cold War videos that I've done of late. But I have another weapon from World War II that I want to showcase because it's really quite interesting. Um, here it is. It's a P-38, and uh, this particular weapon uh, was from... 1945. It was one of the last P-38s made, and you can tell by the prefix here, and this weapon is clear and safe. So that B prefix on the weapon right here uh, basically says that this is essentially an old, an, uh, like one of the last P-38s that entered production. This was made in the Walther factory, and uh, if we get in a little closer, I'll show you some of the interesting, uh, well, some of the reasons why this weapon itself is interesting. Um, and is quite distinct from other P-38s. So, got a magazine with some nice patina there, Mark P-38. Okay guys, as I said, weapon's clear and safe, on safety now, but I'm going to take it apart and I'm going to show you why this weapon's so interesting. First, as I said, that B prefix here uh, showcases this gun was made around 1945. Now that's just the frame, but I'm going to show you something pretty interesting. So first, I'm going to take this gun down, show you some of the internals. First I need the magazine out though. Alright. Gun's a little finicky, but bear with me for a second. It's a little bit old. So pull this out. Much like a 92. Comes right off the frame. And if you look at the style of locking system in this weapon is very, very reminiscent of the uh, M9 pistol, the Beretta 92. So, take it out like this. There's your uh, upper part of the frame here. I'm going to set this aside for one second, and I'm going to show you some of the markings on here. Now, if you zoom in a little bit here, you'll see a eagle with an N. Now, that is very distinct from this on the frame, which I'll show you right now. Right here you see the eagle mark with a 359. That's the Walther factory marking uh, given to the Walther factory during World War II. It's kind of a secret code to avoid the factory being discovered and bombed. Uh, so a lot of people didn't know where the guns came from uh, without the designation, without the designated numbers and the information associated with them. Uh, so this gun was made in the Walther factory as well as this. Uh, these Walther HPs which is what this marking uh, shows here. That's what this weapon is. The, the upper part of the slide is actually a Walther HP. Now that's the commercial gun, uh, the commercial version of the P-38. Uh, the P-38 um, originally was uh, created as the Walther HP for commercial purposes, but was later adopted by the Wehrmacht uh, in, the early in the late 1930s, early 1940s, as it was phased in. Now, as this gun was phased into military service, much like a lot of their uh, civilian weapons, the Walther HP was discontinued for a time. But there were a lot of parts laying around the Walther factory from Walther HPs. Now, during the end of the war, parts were becoming remarkably scarce. Now you see, also, before I put this back together, and make sure when you're putting this back together, this little dropping link here is uh, pushed back up. Uh, you can see down here uh, all the markings as well. Walther HP markings, this whole slide is a Walther HP assembly. So, now you'll notice which is characteristic of a lot of, well, which is characteristic of all Walther HPs. Let me put this gun back together for one second and I'll show you. It's a little bit finicky, it's a very old gun. Give me one second here. Alright. So, what you'll notice here, typically, on a Walther HP slide, you're going to have the Walther markings on here, the commercial Walther markings, which you'll most likely recognize from modern contemporary Walther pistols. This gun, uh, as I had examined, I originally thought it had the markings uh, dremeled off or something, or like they were like sanded off, 
Uh, however, you'll notice depending on the barrel, this, this gun wasn't sand, sanded at all and I had it examined. This never had the roller marking, which is characteristic of commercial Walther guns, which suggests that this was actually an unfinished slide that was never marked by the factory. So most likely what happened was, uh, during the end of the war, this AC-45 frame was married to a Walther HP slide, a commercial slide, uh, for use by the Wehrmacht as kind of a last-ditch gun. So this gun's really, really interesting. It has no import marks and was most likely brought, brought back by one of, the, one of our local veterans here in Pennsylvania. Now, I picked this gun up at um, a place called Ross Brothers. Uh, it's a local uh, locksmith and gun shop. Uh, they're actually really, they, they get a lot of really, really obscure guns from the internet, from online, and locally as well. There's a lot of local collectors. This particular gun actually came from a local collector. It's a really nice piece. It's one of my favorite pistols, and is a really, really, really nice piece of history. And I, and I highly recommend, if you get a chance to check out uh, P38, you get into them while they, still, while they still last. Especially guns like this. You can find these in pawn shops. You can find these in local gun stores. I mean, that bring backs really neat weapons. Uh, that have a lot of provenance, like this particular gun here. And while it may not be, uh, its, it's provenance might not be very provable, and while it's very hard to track a lot of these guns in terms of where they were, how they came back, you know, whether, whether they were imported uh, uh, into the country or brought back, when they were imported, etc., they're really nice pieces of history, and honestly, they're, I, I think they're really underappreciated. Uh, especially now. I mean, they're starting to go up in price now, so I highly recommend it. If you find a really good deal on one of these guns, I got this for 500 bucks. Highly recommend it because each one of these guns has a story. Now, I want to thank you for coming with me today and checking out this old war horse here. And uh, it's really good to be back in the States, guys. I'm glad I can make videos for, for all of you. And, uh, well, it's kind of... I guess tied off this video. We're going to be uh, doing some shooting footage of this gun. I'll show you. I'll show it in action. And if we have any of the notorious malfunctions, which, which this particular gun is known for, uh, it should be pretty interesting, and I can kind of address that. I'll do that right now. Basically, the gun's pretty old, springs are pretty old, and uh, even though the, the barrel on this gun has like a mirror shine, here I can show you really, really quick. Um, really, really beautiful gun. Really, really good example of a wartime P38. Let me just take this apart one last second here and show you. If I get this thing will cooperate with me, yeah. if not, just give me one second. That's one of the finicky things. Much unlike a 92, it's you know it's an older gun, and sometimes it has. Uh, actually, let me try this. It helps if I just do it ever so slight like that and take it off. There we go. So let me show you the barrel really quick on this gun before we get to shooting. I don't know if you can see down that barrel, but it's got a beautiful mirror shine. This gun has very has been shot very very seldomly. So when I bought this gun, maybe it had a few boxes of ammunition put it through it since God knows how long. I mean, this, this gun's been around for a while and it's very, it's been shot very, very lightly. All right, guys, fixing to go hot with the P38. Loaded mag, safety's on, we'll change that. Bracket slide. First malfunction, sometimes it fails to go into battery. So drop the slide again. Okay, we're good to go. Malfunction. Failed to go forward there. Worked that time, but I want to show you guys this. This gun's supposed to be in single action right now. now. This is a characteristic malfunction of this gun. Now, partially it might be because I haven't lubed it up in a while, but this happens even when the gun's lubed. Now, you see the loaded chamber indicator is right here, but the hammer's forward. So the gun's in double action right now. Sometimes this thing pops out of double action or pops out of single action back into double action so I mean the gun's old it's got a lot of problems but you know it's still a pretty decent shooter all things concerned not the most reliable but still fun gun locked back didn't go for, uh, didn't put the next round into battery same malfunction Gun popped back into double action. I'm going to put it into single action manually. Gun's back in double action again. Gun's in single action now. So that time it worked. 
that's it. So, run another mag through it, just see how well it does the second time. See you guys back on the firing line. Alright guys, just a lube it up just a little bit on the springs here. Loop the slot up a little bit, might make it a little bit easier here. Firing pin. All right, good enough. So, you get it back in here, you got to lift this part up. But when you seat it on the gun here, when you put it on the, when you marry it back to the slide, you got to make sure that's down. So. Alright guys, we're loaded up again. I took this thing apart and I scrubbed it pretty good with some CLP to try to loop it up. We'll see if it runs any better. Second magazine. Good. Chambered, single action. Much better. Didn't lock open. Ah, how about that? Failure to well, extract it pretty well, but okay. Last round. That's it. Worked a lot better, but still had that malfunction at the end. So, gun's not perfect. Like I said, it's old, but uh, make sure you keep your guns lubed up, man. <laughs> well, I've been gone for a year. I really haven't touched this. I just wanted to see how it would uh, function out of the just fresh out of the safe. Lubed it up a year ago. I mean, I, don't, I didn't expect it to uh, be very smooth, but even lubed up, we still had one malfunction. And I can tell you this from experience, this gun has a lot of malfunctions, even when it's in, you know, fairly upkept condition. So thank you guys again. Damn good shooter, not reliable, wouldn't carry it, but nice piece of history. That's all for this guys. Crackshot 47 out.